and welcome back to my channel. Today we continue talking about conditional sentences. In our previous lesson, we discussed the four types of conditional sentences that we have in English. If you haven't seen that video, please check the link down below. In this lesson today, we'll see how those four conditionals can be mixed, how we can twist and combine those formulas to express what we want. And I invite you to start with a little revision of those four types of conditional sentences that we previously discussed in detail. As you remember, we can divide conditional sentences into two groups – those that speak of real condition and those that describe unreal conditions. Conditional sentences that speak of real conditions can be subdivided into the so-called zero conditional and the first conditional. Those that express unreal conditions can be subdivided into the second conditional and the third conditional. Zero conditional and the first conditional belong to the indicative mood, while the second conditional and the third conditional are in the subjunctive mood, because they express things that are contrary to fact. So there are four types of conditional sentences. The formula of zero conditional is if plus a present tense plus a present tense or the infinitive. For example, in spring, the spot of the road gets washed out if there is a lot of rain. That happens on a regular basis, so we can consider it to be a fact. And you remember that in conditional sentences of this type, we can replace if with when, because we speak here about things that happen on a regular basis, and zero conditional expresses certainty. Another type of conditional sentences is the first conditional. The formula we have here is if plus a present tense plus a future tense. If there is a lot of rain this spring, this part of the road will get washed out again. Remember, you can use any present tense in the condition at subordinate clause, and you have variations in the main clause as well. You can use the future simple, you can use the infinitive, you can use progressive future tenses if you need to. The first conditional expresses something which may happen in the future. The second conditional has the following formula if plus the past simple tense or the subjunctive to plus would plus the infinitive. You can use the past simple tense or the past progressive tense if you need to show that the action is a process. And for the verb to be, you use the subjunctive to because only the verb to be has its distinct form in the subjunctive mood, which is were. Yeah, were for all persons. I were, you were, he were, she were, etc. Instead of would, here you can use could or might. Let's see. If there were a lot of rain this spring, this part of the road would get washed out. The second conditional speaks about an unreal situation, something that is impossible now. And the last one, the third conditional, its formula is if plus the past perfect tense or the past perfect progressive tense. Again, if we need to show that the action was a process, plus would plus the perfect infinitive. If there had been a lot of rain last spring, this part of the road would have got washed out. The third conditional always speaks about a condition in the past and is absolutely unreal. Now, what are mixed conditionals? Mixed conditionals combine conditions from the past with results in the present or conditions in the present with results in the past. So actually it's always a combination of the second conditional and the third conditional. You either have your main clause in the third conditional and subordinate clause in the second conditional, or vice versa. Your main clause goes into the second conditional while your subordinate conditional clause is in the third conditional. That's why we logically have two types of mixed conditional sentences. But before we begin, I want to stress that these names exist only in grammar books. 
In reality, there are two things that you must remember how to form the so-called first conditional. And the other thing is that when we speak about hypothetical things, things that are contrary to fact, contrary to reality, we need to go one tenth back. This is how we form the second and the third conditionals. Now let's take a closer look at what we call mixed conditionals. So mixed conditionals are divided, as I have already said, into two types. The first is when we have a past hypothetical or unreal situation plus a present result. And the second is when there is a present hypothetical situation and a past result. We'll start with the first case when we have a past hypothetical or unreal situation and a present result. For example, if I had gone to bed earlier yesterday, I wouldn't feel sleepy the whole day today. We have a condition in the past, if I had gone to bed earlier yesterday, and the result of it is in the present, I wouldn't feel sleepy the whole day today. The result is in the present, yeah? It's a counterfactual result, because the fact is that I do feel sleepy today, right? So, actually, what we did is we combined the third conditional with the second conditional, right? If I had gone according to the formulas that we learned, this is the third conditional. And here we have would feel, according to our formulas, this is the second condition. In the conditional clause, we have the past perfect tense. In the subordinate clause, we have the analytical subjunctive would plus the first form of the verb. Let's look at another example. If he hadn't been wearing a helmet, he could be dead now. We have a condition in the past and the result in the present. If there and then he hadn't been wearing a helmet, now he could be dead. Again, if we take a closer look at the components of this conditional clause, we'll see the past perfect continuous. So, actually, this is a half of the third conditional. Here we have could and the first form of the verb to be he could be, so this is a half of the second conditional. And one more example. I would be at home now if I had used the subway. The result is in the present and the condition is in the past. These sentences suggest that something would be different now if something else had been done in the past. The formula of this type of sentences is if plus the past perfect or the past perfect progressive would, could, might plus the infinitive. And you see that the if clause or the subordinate conditional clause belongs to the third type, yeah? to the third conditional, unreal in the past. And the main clause belongs to the second conditional type. It's unreal in the present. Let's discuss more examples. If she had gone to the dentist to have her tooth filled, she wouldn't be groaning with pain now. If she had done that in the past, now the situation would be different. She wouldn't be groaning with pain. But she didn't do that and now she is groaning with pain. Had I been more attentive throughout the semester, I would know the answer to this question now. The word order in this conditional clause is inverted, yeah? We can say if I had been or had I been. This is something I speak about in my previous lesson where we discuss the word order in conditional sentences. The idea, though, in the sentence is the same. If something had been done in the past, now the situation would be different. Yeah, I would know, but I don't know because I wasn't attentive. Would you be so much into music now if you hadn't given up piano classes at a young age? I know that many young people give up their music classes and then when they are adults, they start playing a musical instrument again and with more passion. And the last sentence. 
We would be living in Pasadena now if you had agreed to relocate. But the reality is the person didn't agree to relocate and they now are not living in Pasadena. Now, the second type of mixed conditionals. If something were true in general, the result would have been possible in the past. Here we speak about a hypothetical situation in the present and a result in the past. Something would have happened differently if something else were true in general. So the formula is if plus the past simple tense or the past progressive tense or the subjunctive to for the verb to be plus would, could, might plus the perfect infinitive. The conditional clause is of the second type and it expresses an unreal situation in the present and the main clause is of the third type. So you see they have changed their places. Now the main clause is in the third conditional and the subordinate is in the second conditional. While in the previous case we spoke about the main clause in the second conditional and the subordinate clause in the third conditional. Examples. If she were stronger, she would have taken part in that competition. If she were stronger in general, in present, we speak about a bigger present here, yeah? not literally now, but in general. If she were stronger, she would have taken part in that competition then. The condition is in the present and the result is in the past. I could have placed the order myself if I knew French. The condition is in the present the result is in the past. There and then I would have placed the order if I knew French, if in general I were a person who knows French. But I'm not such a person, right? If I weren't so busy these days, I would have helped you yesterday. The condition is in the present and the result is in the past. Okay, now let's look at some more examples. If Patrick weren't a hard worker, he wouldn't have got a promotion. But he is a hard worker. This is his permanent characteristic. It is his trait. But if he weren't a hard worker, there and then, in that particular situation in the past, he wouldn't have got a promotion. Pay attention that the subjunctive to is used here. We say Patrick weren't, not Patrick wasn't because the verb to be does have its form in the subjunctive mood. You can hear if Patrick was, of course, but it's not quite correct. If she spoke German, she would have moved to Berlin, but she doesn't speak German. That's why she didn't move to Berlin then, in that situation in the past, right? If she weren't fond of rock music, she wouldn't have gone to Wacken Open Air. The fact is, she is fond of rock music and that's why she did go to Wacken Open Air. But if she weren't fond of rock music, she wouldn't have gone to Wacken Open Air. Again, she and weren't, the subjunctive to is used. They would have invited you to their son's wedding if you were better neighbors. But we are not good neighbors. <laughs> we don't get on well with our neighbors. That's why we were not invited to their son's wedding. Where I reach, again, the subordinate clause is inverted here. Where I reach, or you can also say if I were rich, I would have bought that villa we saw yesterday. But I'm not rich and that's why I didn't buy it. These sentences help us speak about results that we could have had in the past if our reality, our general reality, yeah, our permanent situation were different. We have just seen that we can combine a past result with a present condition 
and a past condition with a present result. So this way or another we combine the past and the present. Now let's look at somewhat different sentences. What are some other ways that we can mix conditions and results? Let's take a look at this sentence. If he had signed up for the trip to India last month, he would be joining us tomorrow. Obviously, the main clause of the sentence speaks about the future. He would be joining us tomorrow. But the conditional clause speaks about a situation from the past. And so we have the conditional clause in the past and the main clause in the future. The formula that we have learned, though, is still the same. You use the past perfect and the conditional clause and you use would plus the infinitive in the main clause. Yeah? I'm not joining you tomorrow because I didn't sign up for that trip. But if I had signed up for that trip, I would be joining you tomorrow. Another example. If I didn't have so much vacation time, I wouldn't go with you to Paris next week. Here, our condition is in the present and the result is in the future. Let's paraphrase it in the indicative mood. I don't have much vacation time. That's why I will not go with you to Paris next week. But if I had, I would. Another example. If your parents weren't making us a big dinner tonight, I would have invited you to that new restaurant. We have a condition in the future and a result in the past. I didn't invite you because I knew that your parents would be making us a big dinner tonight. And if I were getting married tomorrow, I would be very anxious. Our condition is in the future and the result is in the present. Let's paraphrase it in the indicative mood. I am not anxious now because I am not getting married tomorrow. In this lesson, we have learned that we can mix conditions and results in different ways. Though all these names like mixed conditionals, zero conditional, second conditional, etc. exist only in grammar books, I do recommend that you memorize them this way and you learn the formulas. Each of these types has its own formula. This will help you very much because this way you will be able to rely on these formulas. And then when you have already memorized all those formulas with time and practice, you will have more freedom. I sincerely hope that this lesson was useful. Leave your comments down below, subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss the upcoming lessons and see you in the next video.